Has this ever happened to you? You sit down, ready to draw, but lo and behold, you have no idea what to draw. And no matter how much you rack your brain, you just can't think of what to draw. And you're just sitting there, looking at a blank page. Well, don't worry. If this is you, I got you. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing some of my top tips for what to draw when you have absolutely no idea what to draw. Now whether you are going through some sort of art block or you're out of practice or even just starting out drawing, these tips should have you covered with striking inspiration. So first tip is to draw from life. Life drawing is an amazing exercise for practicing human figure and perspective in movement. There are two main websites that I use for life drawing since Miss Rona won't let us go draw naked people in real life anymore. The first one is Croquis Cafe. They have video sessions of life drawing available on Vimeo and on their website. Although you will be subjected to an age verification as there are boobies and other parts on show. They also have a big reservoir of life drawing reference images on their Instagram. So as much as I recommend Croquis Cafe, uh, the website I prefer for life drawing is Line of Action. I've mentioned this website many times here on the channel as it is an amazing free resource for life drawing where you can customize your classes. You can pick what you're drawing, animals, people, hands, landscapes, whatever, as well as customize your session or class. You can pick your subject groups, your class mode, and how much time you want each model session to be. If you've got 10 minutes to spare in the morning, do five exercises of two minutes. You want to draw horses for 40 minutes? Yeah, you can do that too. They've got it all. So Line of Action is probably my go-to uh, life drawing resource at the moment. Life drawing is one of the best ways to practice human figure and body movements. I used to go to weekly life drawing classes when I was at university, which was held at a, at a pub or a bar, depending on where you're from, and it was so much fun. I can't wait to start going to those again once Rona dies down. I also think it's such an important exercise to understand proportions, perspective, and just like how the human body can move and interact, not only with itself, but with other objects. Especially for animators, knowing how the body moves and what it looks like from all different sides and angles is super important. The more life drawing you do, the more you'll develop a shorthand for different poses and body parts. These are particularly good for people who want to improve drawing hands or feet. I personally still struggle with drawing feet in different perspectives, so once in a while I'll do some feet classes. Um, yeah, that sounds really bad. <laughs> also, if you just want some feet pics, just go on Line of Action. They've got tons. <laughs> and especially for all you out there that just hide hands in pockets whenever you don't want to draw them, this is a great resource if you want to start learning how to draw them. If you don't want to look at naked people and feed for long stretches of time, that's okay. There are probably hundreds of objects around you right now that you can draw. When I first started going to drawing classes, the first few months consisted of me looking at objects and drawing them from different perspectives. This also helps you with proportions and drawing only what you see, not what you know the object looks like. I hope that makes sense. So if you ever feel super uninspired, just draw your favorite object or whatever you can find around your house. Practice is practice after all. So I just drew this cute little plant that I have on my desk, which is obviously fake because I can't keep anything alive. And yeah, just drew it from my perspective. Next tip is finding yourself a starting point from prompt lists and drawing challenges. During patches of art block, I normally resort to draw this in your style challenges on Instagram or finding a nice drawing challenge that might be going around social media at the time. These are great as you already have something to base your drawing off of. You already have a starting point and a prompt. All you have to do is reinterpret it in your own style. If you just go on the draw this in your style tag on Instagram, you will find thousands of draw this in your style challenges on there. I picked this one as it was all kinds of purple and it really caught my eye. Uh, so yeah, I'd normally take a screenshot from the original artist's page, so the original post, uh, and then I just have fun with it. 
This is normally my go-to when I know I want to draw something but I don't have the energy or the mental capacity to think up a new drawing idea or design or concept and I just want to sit on the sofa and draw something. Draw this in your styles are perfect for that. They're also perfect for if you're still trying to develop an art style and you don't really have the energy to think up a concept, you just want to practice your style. These are great for that. So I'll normally just do them on my iPad, on Procreate or something like that and just kind of have a nice time rendering out something. There are also character design challenges that you can explore. The character design challenge does monthly prompts that you can use as a starting point for your character. Their website is also an awesome source for inspiration, by the way. Similarly, there are loads and loads of drawing prompt lists on Instagram. Normally people will do these for like quote unquote monthly challenges such as Inktober or Huevember or Mermaid, but people are always coming up with new ones all the time and most of the times they're not even month specific like this hair one that I found which is 30 hair themed drawing prompts or the Studio Ghibli one or even Character August. So as you can see, there are tons and tons out there that you can just do no matter the time of year. Here I'm just showing you some examples of Huevember and also some like material specific Huevembers. They just have so many things out there. So you'll definitely find a challenge for you. Next tip, tip number three, is fishing for reference images. Now, my top pick personally for finding reference images is our Lord and Savior Pinterest and also Instagram. Pinterest is just awesome, okay? You can create boards on there and make yourself a whole pool of reference for when you feel uninspired. I have one for human figure, one for drawing inspiration. I have boards for different moods, genres, plants, time periods. Honestly, the world is your oyster. Make a board about oysters, you know? You can just do it all. Another fun thing about Pinterest is that if you're using it on your iPad, you can use a split screen feature and draw on Procreate with your reference image right next to it. This is what I used to do. Now I know that Procreate has a new feature that allows you to import reference images that you can hover on screen while you draw. But if, if you work on something other than Procreate on your iPad, the split screen feature is for you. But if you draw from a reference image or do a study from a picture, it is good practice to mention it or even post the reference image you used if you do post that drawing on social media. I myself have forgotten to do this many, many times and I'm trying to get better at it, but it's just in good practice to um, at least mention that this is based on a reference picture. Another thing I also like using is clothing brands on Instagram as reference picture pools. There are many models on there in all kinds of poses and outfits, so if you want some cool references, maybe that's where you can look to. So some of the brand accounts that I like to use are Lazy Oaf, Lucy and Yak, Nobody's Child, just kind of like small clothing brand businesses, normally UK based. They just normally have a really nice like array of photography for their products. They're just more creative with them. So I quite enjoy those brands and, you know, things adjacent to them. They also have really colorful feeds that I really just like following. So yeah, maybe just go to a, an Instagram page of a brand that you enjoy and you'll have like tons of uh, modeling pictures there that you can use for reference. So I'm just drawing this one that I just found on Lazy Oaf's Instagram feed um, and just kind of giving it a whirl. It's different positions and different poses that you normally wouldn't think of because they're trying to showcase different assets or different, you know, clothing items. So I find that very interesting to work with. So then I found this really cool picture of um, this guy wearing a really cool cardigan sort of sweater moment. And so I, I went with that one for my next drawing. He just had like a nice sassy pose, kind of an attitude going with it. So. I, I just enjoyed um, his whole energy, so I drew him out. This is also a nice resource because you get to draw cool outfits that you probably wouldn't draw uh, if you were just looking at like human figure boards. So here you also have reference of how clothes work on a body and how they 
would interact with different poses. Tip number four, color palettes. Start off with color. Another great way of giving yourself a different starting point for your drawing is basing it off of a color or color palette. I have this amazing book called Palette Perfect by Lauren Wager that I have recommended on this channel for ages now. It's basically a huge book packed with color palettes organized into categories, moods, genres. Something I like to do is pick a random color palette from this book and start off with that. The book provides you with the RGB and the CMYK values and numbers for each and every color. So you can actually type those numbers straight into whatever drawing program you use. So you get the exact shade that's in the book. Once I get my color palette all set up and ready, I take to thumbnailing different ideas that the palette makes me think of. And then I just have some fun with it. I find this challenge really just really nice for the brain because normally uh, I think of things um, in terms of poses and moods and uh, and subject wise first I don't usually go color wise first if that makes sense so it's interesting to give yourself a different starting point it kind of rewires your brain a little bit and it might instigate some very interesting inspirations for other pieces you never know it's also interesting because if you just limit yourself to three colors in a palette, it's it's cool. You, you can like mix them together, see what uh, blending them together looks and what other colors you can make out of those three colors. So it just really makes you experiment and, and play around a little bit. So I always like doing that as well. So I go to thumbnailing, I pick the thumbnail that I like the most, and then I just go to town with it and have fun. And it's just so like stress-free. So this is what I came up with with that specific color palette. Just, just a nice purple, blue, pinkish colored drawing. If you don't have a palette perfect book, which is completely valid, Procreate also has this feature now where you can take an image or a picture or anything and it turns it into a palette for you. So if there's like a screen cap from a movie or an artist's piece that you really, really enjoy the colors of, Procreate does it for you. And I find that a super cool feature. So if you don't have an iPad or don't like digital drawing, you can do this with markers or any other material out there. What I do is I just close my eyes and pick out three random colors. You've seen me do this on various occasions here on the channel. It's called the three marker challenge normally. And whatever you get, you have to make a piece based on just those three colors. Again, you can obviously like mix them and see what colors blending them together make. Um, and just the challenge is just that you have to make something just using those three colors. And I find that really, really fun. Even if it's just like a whole page of you thumbnailing, getting nowhere, hey, you still experimented with that. You still worked with what you got. And and I, I, I just think it's a really nice new way of thinking uh, for a drawing when you're given your tools and you can't really stray too far from them. Lastly, for my final tip, try something completely new. Experiment with different mediums, processes, and colors. Be messy, swatch things. You can even try drawing what you normally would draw, but with a different tool. Fine liners, inks, markers, pencils, ballpoint pens. Go crazy. Sketchbooks are meant to look messy, so don't be afraid to try new things in it and maybe even hating what you draw in it. You are still drawing something and trying something out. Especially when you're feeling uninspired, allow your brain to be creative without a goal or an end point in sight. Just draw because you want to draw or draw because you want to try this new material out. I got a, a, a beautiful fountain pen a few months ago and I was actually doing some drawings with fountain pens. Even though it's not the most practical thing, I kind of just wanted to see what it would look like to do a full drawing in a fountain pen. And it was, it was you know, definitely an experience. So whether that is trying out a different kind of paint or a different kind of marker or just actually trying drawing with a ballpoint pen, if you're someone who very much likes to erase and be a perfectionist, try a ballpoint pen because you can't erase that. So yeah, just definitely try new things. Try something you wouldn't think of. And if you don't want to stray too far away from your comfort zone, you don't have to try drawing something new. 
draw something you're comfortable with, but with a new tool. So I love drawing faces, that's my comfort zone, so I try drawing things with faces with different materials, whether it be markers or uh, ballpoint pens in this case. Um, just allow your brain to, to mindlessly draw and eventually I feel like your art block will, um, will dissipate a little bit. And that was all the tips I had for you guys today. I hope they helped. Let me know if there were any you hadn't heard of before that you might try from here on out. Above all, have fun with drawing. It's fun as hell, okay? Thanks for watching. Have a lovely day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.